in the morning talking to you people um and it was so much fun but uh aside from needing a little bit more sleep uh the last time we did this i was here uh in this little office room and i set up the cameras you know two different ones and then you know the light but the light at this time of day is about to change and by the end of the stream last time i couldn't see what i was doing and I was like, why can't I, Ugh, I can't, you know, and so, and so I have to think, I have to do it differently. And I didn't think about doing that ahead of time, like yesterday, you know, so because I was doing other things, right? Setting up the discord, which we'll talk about uh, in case you missed the stream yesterday, last night. Um, but I hope you don't mind. Hey, Dr. Murphy's back. I'm so glad you're here. You are in for a treat. I mean, you always are when you're at the quilt nerd show but um there's just i have i have kind of an exciting thing that i'm gonna do uh for you with you i'll just tell you what it is i won't keep you in suspense i want you to be working on your projects that's what the sunday social is all about and i was thinking well why don't i read something to to them why don't i read something to the people and i was thinking of a couple different things we'll talk about this book we'll talk about this book in a little bit but this is pretty heavy stuff you know it's like not that you can't handle it it's just like scholarly sort of eh, it's a lot maybe for a Sunday although I will read you something from it but then I was like well, what could I read while they're sewing and then I thought well, how about this how about Alice Walker's famous story everyday use Short story by Alice Walker about quilts, a famous short story. I mean, one of the most famous short stories, I think, in the American canon. So I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna read it to you. And I'll have, I'm, I've got a, like a, I've got visuals for you. <laughs> um, we're gonna go, I've got, I'm, we're gonna go to Google Arts and Culture, which is a fabulous website. And the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles has galleries there. And so I'm just going to lazily click while I'm reading. And that's, that's what we're gonna do to begin with. What do you think? I think it sounds cool. I really wanna sew, but I don't know. I mean, I've really, I've gotta figure out just how to do it. And uh, yeah, so I hope you don't mind. But, but I mean, that's not all I'm gonna do. We have other things to talk about and look at. So it's a normal show, but it's an extra show. And I hope that's all right. Okay, let's see who's here. I hope that sounds, you think it's a good idea? All right, cool. Thanks, Charles. Nope, not Charles. Not Charles. Akhill? No. Just a guy sewing. Just, yeah, yeah, it's Akhill. Okay, good. I didn't have to look. I mean, I did, but I was right. Oh, you, you subscribed. I'm so glad that you did. That's fantastic. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, for two months, that's amazing. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Quilt Nerd, uh, formerly known as Quilt Church, it's still church. The church music is going to stay forever. It's a perfect soundtrack. But um, yeah, Quilt Nerd. We're taking it back to basics, real basic. Quilt Nerd is the show. Um, if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you did. It's $4.99 a month. You sub you support the uh, the work that I do is the, the Quilt Nerd who brings you all this stuff. And uh, you get to avoid the ads that Twitch will play from time to time. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get a free subscription every month to Twitch and you can just keep re-upping for Quilt Nerd if you want. So that's that. Brendan is here. Marianne is here. Marianne, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that I'm not sewing. You know, Dee Marie. Hey, Dee Marie. Malrose, excellent. Ooh, it's pouring rain in Northern California. I love that. It's perfect social weather, indeed. Well, I mean, now that you said that, I feel very good about reading a story to you all because I mean, a pouring down rain day, and a sewing project and someone reading aloud to you. I don't know. I think that sounds pretty good. Um, oh, don't tell Mary. Mm -hmm. What does this say? Mm -hmm. Marianne says she'll be cooking for the first half of the social. Mm. Well, I'm not the only one who's not sewing <laughs> during the social. Blobfish is back. Excellent. Denver is beautiful today. I'm glad to hear it. Carol Hempel. Everybody, if you have, if you weren't in the chat room last night, it was very, it was very good. Everyone was very funny. And I mean, I feel like they reached levels of Carol Hempel, like dryness and hilarity, <laughs> you know, um, it was very good. Thank you for subscribing Blobfish. That's awesome. You used your Amazon Prime free subscription to do so. Brilliant. 
I really appreciate that. It's awesome. Um, a nun maker, Amy, I think that you're back from beautiful. I'm so glad you're, you're sewing. That's good. You're following the rules. There's no rules, but uh, it's really good to see you. I believe you've been here before. Welcome back. Uh, if you're new, welcome, welcome back. Uh, if you're new, welcome. <laughs> um, the cat finally showed up in Carol's emote list. Okay, so yesterday I mentioned that these special emotes, they're emojis. It, in Twitch land, they call them emotes. I don't know, they just have to be different. But I believe everybody, is it just for subscribers that get the special emotes? It might be, it might be. But if you are subscribed, I mean, someone may be able to tell us if that's true, if it's only for subscribers, um, these special emotes. But uh, as a creator, well, as a creator, uh, I get to upload special emojis, basically. And uh, we've got the Heart Plus, just like my insignia. It's been like my insignia for a very long time. And that just, you know, you put that in the chat when you, I don't know, you're feeling the love, maybe, for the show um, or something we're talking about. And then there's the smiley face that's just a good, rosy-cheeked, big smiley face that I like. And there's also, um, there were just three to begin with. What was the other one, y'all? It was, uh, oh yeah, church, the church icon for Quilt Church, which will stay forever because some days, I mean, some sometimes the content or what someone says or something is sort of so good it reaches like the sublime, you know, holy, worshipful. So you can use the church emote. But yesterday I added two. I'm not sure why I got to do that. Maybe it's because I have subscribers now. Um, but Twitch allowed me, unlocked for me two more emote slots. And so I added a B and that's for when you're upset <laughs> about something. Cause you know, I, from time to time get a B in my bonnet, um, or I'm just like an angry B. I know there's the sewing B connotation, but this is for, you know, when you're just mad as B and you can just, you know, be like, wow, I don't like that. And hopefully not to something someone said, but maybe. Um, but if we're talking about, you know, controversial things and you feel a type of way about it, you can use the B or multiple Bs. And then I also added a cap, not a cap and gown, but a graduate cap, a mortarboard uh, icon. Basically, you can use that when you feel extra nerdy or when the content is extra nerdy or when you learn something. It's learning. That's the name of the emoji, learning. So it showed up, so that's good. So, so I believe people can access that as subscribers for sure. I'll, you know, I'm learning all this Twitch stuff. If you're new, so am I, totally new, but I just really like Twitch for all the fun stuff it can do. I'm learning more and more about that. Um, it's gray and raining in Iowa too. Iowa, he seems far away right now. <coughs> Pardon me, Holmes is in the house. Hey there, what are y'all working on? She's still working on her coat. Oh yeah. You were working on that a couple weeks ago. I would, if you had finished it, I would be shocked, shocked. Takes a long time when you make your own damn quilt. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Holmes. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, Blobfish Church, yes. Uh, Ack Hill's here, excellent, excellent. Welcome back. The new Elizabeth says she needs to make a, a, couple, of, a couple of blocks for her guild's group quilt for QuiltCon. Yeah, I bet all of those are going right now, right? Well, some of them are probably not going yet and everyone's worried and, um, but a lot of them are probably going. Uh, what is the group quilt theme? There's a th theme, right? Put it in the chat. Um, exciting, good, good, good. Okay, good. Uh, Malrose uh, just started an online oil painting class. Oh, that's awesome. That is very cool. Hoping to learn more about value and proportion to apply to my art quilts. Fabulous. Love that. We have an art quilt uh, as our, our desktop quilt, our opening salvo to this show. Um, Michelle Van Scrappy, welcome back. Um, she's sewing on long, a long distance drive with questionable cell service. Okay. Take care, everyone. Working on a Celtic knot hand sewing project. Wow. Yeah, the Celtic knot, when, I mean, the effect of a great Celtic knot motif is like so cool. Good luck. Don't let your needle poke you. Um, oh yeah, there you go. Okay, Akhil asked the same question of Elizabeth. Is there a theme uh, or what is the theme for um, 
for the Cool Con Quilt. I'm catching up on the chat, so this may have been asked and answered long ago. Thrilled Dr. Murphy is here. Welcome back. Um, Elizabeth is from Memphis. You're not the Elizabeth I thought you were. <laughs> You're not the Elizabeth I thought you were. You're not, but you are equally awesome. From uh, Memphis, the design is of our bridge across the Mississippi River. Wow, it has a special block representing the damaged section. Bridge was shut down for months. Very interesting, okay. So, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nashville, great, another Tennessean. Terrific, okay, good, good, I, I'm glad, I'm glad, okay. People are into this idea. Um, Dr. Murphy can only sew a button on, and even then, thinks it would still fall off. It's all about the shank, man. <laughs> Ask someone, ask someone about, it's the button shank. That's what it's all about. Hey, Tandarelli. Tandar, I don't say that right. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm sort of far away from the little, the little words, but I like calling you Tandarelli. But sometimes I give people nicknames and, you know, maybe they don't like it. Um, Panton School. It's your first time chatting in the chat. I'm so glad that you're here. Usually the Sunday social is, has me sewing too but but it just it didn't happen but like i was not going to stream you know no no i stream when i say i'm going to stream unless really crazy stuff goes down which it's happened twice just twice since we started all this um but i'm so glad you're here you will probably like it here i mean if you don't like it here i don't know what to tell you the people here are cool the quilts are beautiful and hopefully i don't say anything too outrageous uh i also love nashville by the way um, okay, good. Akil's not, Akil's not sewing either. He's tucked into bed right now. I love that. Well, well, you're going to get a story. I'm going to read, if you just came in, I'm going to read a story today. I'm going to read Alice Walker's famous story, Everyday Use. If you have never read it or never heard it, it is a seismic work of literature and short. It's a short story. Um, <laughs> and you know what, Akil, you could have made it up. I appreciate your honesty. You could have been like, I'm working on hexes. Um, I'm so glad you made it to the live. I'm so glad. Uh, Carol Hempel, subscribers do get the emotes. That's what we've just learned. Um, yeah, it's a reward. It's a reward for your patronage. Um, the bee is great, right? We had to have some kind of like angry emote, like meh, you know. Um, working on, a qu on quilting a small quilt, Susan Michael, how are you? Very glad you're here. Um, and Marianne made, uh, made her quilt for the London Modern, angular. Yours looks like the Irish flag. I still don't know if I know the, the theme. Hey, little bird. It's a little bird in the chat. Look at that little bird. She's painting her kid's room. You're great company. Glad you think so. Eric thinks that too. We had Sunday roast. Didn't we have that? Oh yeah, I wasn't on last uh, Sunday, but two Sundays in a row now we've gone to a local pub and had the Sunday roast. It's gonna be really hard to not have a pub around the corner that serves a really good Sunday roast. I mean, that doesn't happen in Chicago. I don't know. It's a big point in London's favor. Oh, so good. The Yorkshire pud and the, well, the, I had chicken today, but Eric had the sirloin and just those potatoes baked in fat. I mean, it's in the gravy. I mean, we just, it's all gravy. It's all gravy. And Quilting Politic, hey Sue. She's working on her sunrise quilt, excellent. And Panton School has been uh, watching on, on YouTube, excellent. Hey, you're in Surrey. You know all about the Yorkshire pudding. Oh yeah. Um, I'm glad that you've been able to catch the recorded um, shows. And it's wonderful to have you here live. Um, is that the same Alice Walker, Carol asks, who wrote The Color Purple? Indeed, it is that same Alice Walker. Walker. Dio Bev is here, flying geese. Flying geese, what was I just, oh yeah. You were here last night, right? We were looking at flying geese, essentially from Sudan, the horse armor coat. Well, it's time for me to open the window. That's like becoming an, an actual part of the show. Okay. Okay. Oof. Well, everybody is here. I'm thrilled and Let's look at this quilt that we have on the screen. Yeah, this one, this one was like, I was kind of, we got back from that roast. I rolled myself into this room and 
yeah, I mean, I kind of, I kind of was flying by the seat of my pants here and, and, uh, hang on. And kind of just, I mean, I, it, it's, I kind of picked it at random, to be honest. I didn't close my eyes and point to something, but I had to, I had to pick something striking. Yes, exactly. I wanted to pick something striking and this was like totally, totally fit the bill. So what is it? Where is it? Who is it? Um, SJ, <clears throat> SJ says, hello, SJ. Was she falling asleep? I shouldn't, I don't know. I don't know if you're men or women or non-binary people. I have no idea. SJ says, when I was falling asleep last night, I was thinking that the combination of flying geese and horse armor is maybe a Pegasus. Oh, that's cool. That's really lovely. Mm hmm You know, to me, that sounds like a quilt. You know? Inspired by content, right? That we've seen. I mean, a quilt, just even the name. I mean, names are so evocative, you know? Pegasus. To make a quilt called Pegasus. What, what does that mean? Like, what would it mean? Flying geese, for sure. You know, I mean, there's horse blocks, but you don't have to do it. So literally, <clears throat> but, but it would be interesting. And that's that's the ultimate, you know, ultimate goal, I guess, of Quilt Nerd is to help, you know, inspire you and inspire you to, you know, to make certain quilts or, or explore your quilt making, inspire you to think beyond what you might have thought before about what quilts can be or what they look like or who makes them. Um, and in riff, man, just like riff, riff. I want you to riff. Um, and Pegasus is a really cool riff on that horse um, padding. The the yeah that we saw. Beautiful, amazing. Pegasus is great, right? What a beautiful word. Um, and just as usual, quilts take us into the whole world. You know, like we're talking about you know, um, armor and, and West Africa. We're talking about, now we're talking about mythology. I mean, we're not talking about mythology, but we're thinking of how beautiful the word Pegasus is, right? And it's come from this chat and the show and all of that. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that horse would have been very fast. I'm not that you're, that's what you're saying, Carol, but, um, okay. So this quilt, let's talk about it. Who is it? Who is it? And when was it made? So this is a quilt that belongs to the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, uh, which is an incredible place that I have not yet been able to see for one reason or another. Hmm. Uh, it's a little embarrassing. Um, and so, and so I would like to go there. Um, the the there are not that many quilt museums in the country there are more than a few there's one in my hometown uh, in iowa uh winterset iowa the iowa quilt museum but most um most quilt museums are not collecting museums so they are ex exhibiting museums that borrow the quilts or display the quilts um and then the quilts go go away to make room for the next exhibition. Um, it is very difficult to be uh, a museum that stores quilts, that has a collection, has an actual collection, um, because quilts take a lot of work to to preserve. Um, they're organic things. Um, they are heavy most of the time, <laughs> or of any quilts of any size can get really heavy. Um, when you start collecting the, the breadth of quilt, you know, history and culture and the output of quilts um, in this world, if you're a global global uh, facing looking uh, museum like the um, International Quilt Museum, you know, you have um, you have so many kinds of quilts to to keep safe, to steward, including uh, quilts with, you know, embroidery or um, um, beads, shells, you know, paint, you know, the, the art quilters start making things that are more like sculptures than anything else. And you have to protect those as well. Um, humidity is, it, it's just a lot. It takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of expertise to keep quilts, um, you know, to save, to have them in a, in a museum that can treat them pro properly. And so um, the International Quilt Museum collects uh, and the San Jose Museum of um, 
Quilts and Textiles is has a permanent collection. Um, and I'll tell you that the permanent collection of the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles contains over 1,200 textiles and includes historic quilts, contemporary quilts, and fiber art forms, as well as garments and textiles from world cultures. Um, they have a searchable database. We're going to see more quilts from San Jose and while I read the, read the story today. This quilt is called, wait, I see a good morning. Good morning, Bip. Good morning, Jill. Jill, I think this is the first, I think I'm seeing you for the first time here in this chat today. Um, I'm not quilting, it should be evident. I feel shame, um, but it was necessary. This quilt is made by, was made by Ruth Garrison um, in 1992. It is called Fire at Evening. Fire at evening. Here's the link. Oh, and I haven't put links in the chat yet. I mean, in the Discord yet. It was 1.15 in the morning. I was exhausted, but don't worry. I will. I kind of can't wait to do that. Um, hey, it's your first live. Word and bird nerd. <gasps> Word and bird nerd. You met me during the Bronte workshop. Excellent. I'm so glad you're here. Wasn't that great? A lot of people in, in the room right now attended the Bronte workshop and big thumbs up. Um, yeah, the feedback we got at this point and it was wonderful, was so much fun. Um, and Word and Bird Nerd should be should be working on, on the, her Bronte or their Bronte project right now, but instead they are making tomato sauce. Approved, fully approved. I should be sewing too, but I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone, I'm gonna let that go. Fire at Evening is uh, another beautiful title, I'd say, for a quilt. This quilt is 60 by 61 inches. Uh, that's 152 by 154 centimeters. And Ruth Garrison is the maker. And I looked her up quickly and I didn't, I didn't find much about her. Now, I'm, while, we're, while we're here, and you're looking at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna look again. Ruth Garrison, quilt artist, um, textiles. You know, work that work that search the best way I can because I did find. I mean, Pinterest is like I, I'm not a fan of Pinterest. It's not really helpful. You know, a lot of times it's just totally something's uncredited and you don't know where it came from and. Um, it's just not really terribly helpful. So the first hit is from Pinterest. Um, it's not showing us much. Uh, <laughs> okay, what I was gonna tell you is that um, I did find a Ruth Garrison um, who had passed away in 2020. Obviously, I do not know, I cannot confirm that this is this person. However, um, there is, quilts are mentioned here um, Ruth graduated from the University of Nebraska at Kearney with her Bachelor's of Fine Arts in 76. Um, she, she did, yes, quilting. Yeah, a passionate artist. Throughout her life, Ruth was a passionate artist. She had many friend, fans who enjoyed her pottery, photography, and paintings. She specialized in acrylic and watercolor in her favorite genres were some such, such. And, and, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I probably shouldn't read more of it because I'm not sure that that's her. Um, but there are things in this particular person's um, obituary that could, could that make sense. Um, so I'm not sure, but, but, and there's nothing else I can find about a Ruth Garrison artist person making quilts, but hey, you're not late, Faith. You are, you are not late anytime. Hey, Rox. Oh, I just love all these people. Okay, coming in here. So maybe I should just, not say anything about Ruth Garrison because we just don't know uh, much about her. But I love this quilt. Um, it looks to me like, you know, so I could actually, let me do, let me do this. Let me do that thing where I, uh, I pull it up a little and we look at it a little bit more closely. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I need to make sure I, I'm drinking water if I'm going to read aloud <clears throat> to you. Okay. So 
sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the Sunday roast. It's making me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm having, oh, I know, I know. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Nope, I can't do it. I can't zoom in, but um, I put the link, I believe, in the chat so you can um, take a look. Yeah, the link is in the chat. So if you want to zoom in a little bit, um, you absolutely should. The quilting, it's interesting. So she's got sashing strips. You know, there's, I mean, I don't know if she would have called them the same, that, that same thing. This is more of an art quilt, you know, than a traditional quilt made for the wall rather than the bed. That's sort of the go-to you know, difference between a traditional quilt and an art quilt. Of course, you know, there's some different styles, you know, a traditional quilt might have sort of traditional colors that, you know, are a callback to, you know, 19th century quilts, you know, turkey reds and, and calico and brown and things. Sometimes these traditional quilts will be using that same palette. Uh, whereas art quilts, you know, would be more likely I think than traditional quilts to use, you know, neon green, right? I'm trying to keep things like fair because there are exceptions to every rule, but um, the colors, you know, and the styles might be a little different, but the main difference between a, a, an art quilt and a traditional one is that art quilts are made to be hung on the wall or to be, you know, presented as a sculpture object, a textile uh, object rather than to be used for utilitarian purposes, <coughs> for example, to sleep under, you know, or to keep your keep yourself warm on a rainy day in California, like one of our friends. Mm. So you might notice that the grid, the grid work there, sashing strips, quilters would would probably call them. I would call them that. Um, they kind of disappear, like you know, they they, they show in some places in certain areas of the quilt and and they don't in others like in the top row um in the top row there's just the quilting lines that make the grid um so the grid in fabric drops away and you have just the quilting lines there it's it's really cool it's really cool you can i mean i don't know sometimes you can really tell when someone's an art quilter if they have a fine art background and many many art quilters do that's another difference actually um that a lot of the the art quilt was sort of born, you know, the 1960s and the 1970s were really the time when art quilts or studio art quilts were, were emerging. And some of the reason why that happened, a lot of people point to the exhibit in 1971, the Whitney Museum of Art uh, displayed, it was 50 years ago this year, displayed um, a collection of quilts on the walls of their museum, a major museum um, in New York City, you know, gave quilts that space, right? And because it was New York and it's this big museum and the show was this blockbuster, I mean, a lot of artists trained in other media saw that show or saw it when it toured or, you know, saw other quilt shows that started happening as a result of that show. And so seeing quilts in this new way, seeing quilts literally up on the wall, they're, they were all bed quilts or ch child's quilts in that Whitney show. None of them were intended for the wall, but they were hung up on the wall like paintings, essentially. And, and so the quilt was framed in this new way. And so artists who may have been trained in painting or sculpture or, you know, printmaking were like, hmm, you did that museum thing, you know, hmm. And, and that kind of, that, that's, that's in the mix uh, for the, the emergence of the studio art quilt or the art quilt is this, this changing, you know, frame for the quilt as a wall hanging, you know? Um, okay, so that's what we got there. Now, hmm, Slack is still open, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm going to pull up well, I've got it pulled up here. More from the San Francisco, I mean, uh, San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. And I'm going to go through them. I'm gonna scroll through them like a slideshow. I wish that there was a slideshow function uh, here. Uh, there is not, but um, 
it's kind of it's almost it's almost the same thing because look if I go like this okay and and I can't download them you know and downloading them well I can I know kind of how to do that but uh, but that's not not so great so I gotta go down a little bit okay let's just make sure that we're gonna not okay yeah all right so that's the plan and I'm gonna read this let me read this story because this is the Sunday social and and it's a different kind of vibe um i mean it has been a different vibe and it's sunday and this show is anything <laughs> that i want it to be but it's anything and i think it makes perfect sense i mean every quilt nerd and ev i mean every quilt nerd needs to know this story everyday use by alice walker so i'm gonna read it like I said, it's a short story. I don't know how long it'll take me, but let me show you this. Sometimes when Eric wants to read me something, and he reads to me a lot and I read to him, I want to know what I'm getting into. I want to know the length of it, okay? So here is the, here is the length. It's from, by the way, it was published in Harper's Magazine, and I am a longtime subscriber to Harper's Magazine, so I felt okay about printing out the PDF and reading it to you. Uh, that's right. Okay, so here we have, this is page one, okay? There were images in the original publication. Page two, okay. Page three and page four, okay. So that's that's the scope of this thing, because you know you start start listening to something and if it just goes on and on and on and you never know you know I that makes me anxious <laughs> I don't know. okay it was published in oh I don't know we better look that up hang on um uh, okay Alice Walker everyday use it was first published in 1973. 1973. Wow. Okay. Okay, great. Great. Y'all ready? You got your stuff? You got your snacks? And your sewing? Okay. Whew. I will wait for her in the yard that Maggie and I made so clean and wavy yesterday afternoon. A yard like this is more comfortable than most people know. It is not just a yard. It is like an extended living room. When the hard clay is swept clean as a floor and the fine sand around the edges lined with tiny irregular grooves Anyone can come and sit and look up into the elm tree and wait for the breezes that never come inside the house. Maggie will be nervous until after her sister goes. She will stand hopelessly in corners, homely and ashamed of the burn scars down her arms and legs, eyeing her sister with a mixture of envy and awe. She thinks her sister has held life always in the palm of one hand, that no is a word the world never learned to say to her. You've no doubt seen those TV shows where the child who has made it is confronted as a surprise by his own mother and father tottering in weakly from backstage. A pleasant surprise, of course. What would they do if parent and child came on the show only to curse out and insult each other? On TV, mother and child embrace and smile into each other's faces. Sometimes the mother and father weep. The child wraps them in his arms and leans across the table to tell how he would not have made it without their help. I have seen these programs. Sometimes I dream a dream in which Dee and I are suddenly brought together on a TV program of this sort. Out of a dark and soft seated limousine, I am ushered into a bright room filled with many people. There I meet a smiling, gray, sporty man like Johnny Carson, who shakes my hand and tells me what a fine girl I have. 
Then we are on the stage, and Dee is embracing me with tears in her eyes. She pins on my dress a large orchid, even though she has told me once that she thinks orchids are tacky flowers. In real life, I am a large, big-boned woman with rough, man-working hands. In the winter, I wear flannel nightgowns to bed and overalls during the day. I can kill and clean a hog as mercilessly as a man. My fat keeps me hot in zero weather. I can work outside all day, breaking ice to get water for washing. I can eat pork liver cooked over the open fire minutes after it comes steaming from the hog. One winter, I knocked a bull calf straight in the brain between the eyes with a sledgehammer and had the meat hung up to chill before nightfall. But of course, all this does not show on television. I am the way my daughter would want me to be. A hundred pounds lighter, my skin like an uncooked barley pancake. My hair glistens in the hot, bright lights. Johnny Carson has much to do to keep up with my quick and witty tongue. But that is a mistake. I know even before I wake up. Who ever knew a Johnson with a quick tongue? Who can even imagine me looking a strange white man in the eye? It seems to me I have talked to them always with one foot raised in flight, with my head turned in whichever way is farthest from them. D, though, she would always look anyone in the eye. Hesitation was no part of her nature. How do I look, Mama? Maggie says, showing just enough. Sorry. How do I look, Mama? Maggie says, showing just enough of her thin body enveloped in a pink skirt and red blouse for me to know she's there, almost hidden by the door. Come out into the yard, I say. Have you ever seen a lame animal, perhaps a dog run over by some careless person, rich enough to own a car, sidle up to someone who is ignorant enough to be kind to him? That is the way my Maggie walks. She has been like this, chin on chest, eyes on ground, feet in shuffle, ever since the fire that burned the other house to the ground. Dee is lighter than Maggie, with nicer hair and a fuller figure. She's a woman now, <clears throat> though sometimes I forget. How long ago was it that the other house burned? 10, 12 years? Sometimes I can still hear the flames and feel Maggie's arms sticking to me, her hair smoking and her dress falling off her in little black papery flakes. Her eyes seemed stretched open, blazed open by the flames reflected in them. And D, I see her standing off under the sweet gum tree she used to ding, gu dig gum out of, a look of concentration on her face as she watched the last dingy gray board of the house fall in toward the red-hot brick chimney. Why don't you do a dance around the ashes? I'd wanted to ask her. She had hated that house that much. I used to think she hated Maggie too, but that was before we raised the money, the church and me, to send her to, that was before we raised the money, the church and me, to send her to Augusta to school. She used to read to us without pity, forcing words, lies, other folks' habits, whole lives upon us two, sitting trapped and ignorant underneath her voice. She washed us in a river of make-believe, burned us with a lot of knowledge we didn't necessarily need to know, pressed us to her with the serious way she read to shove us away like dimwits at just the moment we seemed about to understand. Dee wanted nice things, a yellow organdy dress to wear to her graduation from high school, black pumps to match a green suit she'd made from an old suit somebody gave me. She was determined to stare down any disaster in her efforts. Her eyelids would not flicker for minutes at a time. Often, I fought off the temptation to shake her. At 16, she had a style of her own and knew what style was. I never had an education myself. After second grade, the school was closed down. Don't ask me why. In 1927, colored asked fewer questions than they do now. Sometimes Maggie reads to me. She stumbles along good naturedly, but can't see well. She knows she is not bright. Like good looks and money, quickness passed her by. She will marry John Thomas, who has mossy teeth in an earnest face. 
and then I'll be free to sit here and I guess just sing church songs to myself. Although I never was a good singer, never could carry a tune. I was always better at a man's job. I used to love to milk till I was hooked in the side in 49. Cows are soothing and slow and don't bother you unless you try to milk them the wrong way. I have deliberately turned my back on that house. It is three rooms, just like the one that burned, except the roof is tin. They don't make shingle roofs anymore. There are no real windows, just some holes cut in the sides like the portholes in a ship, but not round and not square with rawhide holding the shutters up on the outside. This house is in a pasture too, like the other one. No doubt when Dee sees it, she will want it to tear it down. She wrote me once that no matter where we choose to live, she will manage to come see us, but she will never bring her friends. Maggie and I thought about this, and Maggie asked me, Mama, when did Dee ever have any friends? She had a few furtive boys in pink shirts hanging about on, a, on wash day after school, nervous girls who never laughed. Impressed with her, they worshipped the, the well-turned phrase, the cute shape, the scalding humor that erupted like bubbles in lye, she read to them. When she was courting Jimmy T, she didn't have much time to pay us, but turned all her fault-finding power on him. He flew to marry a cheap city girl from a family of ignorant, flashy people. She hardly had time to recompose herself. When she comes, I will meet, but there they are. Maggie attempts to make a dash for the house in her shuffling way, but I stay with her with my hand. Come back, um, come back here, I say. And she stops and tries to dig a well in the sand with her toe. It is hard to see them clearly through the strong sun, but even the first glimpse of leg out of the car tells me it's D. Her feet were always neat looking, as if God himself had shaped them with a certain style. From the other side of the car comes a short, stocky man. Hair is all over his head, a foot long, and hanging from his chin like a kinky mule tail. I hear Maggie suck in her breath, <sighs> is what it sounds like. Like when you see the wriggling end of a snake just in front of your foot on a road. <sighs> D, next. A dress down to the ground in this hot weather. A dress so loud it hurts my eyes. There are yellow and orange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry. There are yellows and oranges enough to throw back the light of the sun. I feel my whole face warming from the heat waves it throws out. Earrings gold too and hanging down to her shoulders. Bracelets dangling and making noises when she moves her arm up to shake the folds of the dress out of her armpits. The dress is loose and flows, and as she walks closer, I like it. I hear Maggie go, ugh, again. It is her sister's hair. It stands straight up like the wool on a sheep. It is black as night, and around the edges are two long pigtails that rope about like small lizards disappearing behind her ears. Wasuzo Tieno, she says, coming in on that gliding way the dress makes her move. The short, stocky fellow with the hair to his navel is all grinning, and he follows up with, Assalamu alaikum, my mother and sister. He moves to hug Maggie, but she falls back, right up against the back of my chair. I feel her trembling there, and when I look up, I see the perspiration falling off her skin. Don't get up, says Dee. Since I am stout, it takes something of a push. You can see me trying to move a second or two before I make it. She turns, showing white heels through her sandals, and goes back to the car. Out she peeks next with a Polaroid. She stoops down quickly and snaps off picture after picture of me, sitting there in front of the house with Maggie cowering behind me. She never takes a shot without making sure the house is included. When a cow comes nibbling around the edge of the yard, she snaps it and me and Maggie and the house. Then she puts the Polaroid on the back seat of the car and comes up and kisses me on the forehead. Meanwhile, Assalamu alaikum is going through motions with Maggie's hand. Maggie's hand is as limp as a fish and probably as cold, despite the sweat, and she keeps trying to pull it back. It looks like Assalamu alaikum wants to shake hands, but wants to do it fancy. Or maybe he doesn't know how people shake hands. Anyhow, he soon gives up on Maggie. Well, I say, D. 
No, mama, she says, not D. Wangero, Li- Liwanica, Kimanjo. What happened to D? I wanted to know. She's dead, Wangero said. I couldn't bear it any longer, being named after the people who oppress me. You know as well as me you was named after your Aunt Deesey, I said. Deesey is my sister. She's na- she named D. We call her Big D, after D was born. But who was she named after? asked Wangero. I guess after Grandma D, I said. And who was she named after? asked Wangero. Her mother, I said, and saw Wangero was getting tired. That's about as far back as I can trace it, I said, though in fact I probably could have carried it back beyond the Civil War through the branches. Well, said Asalam Alaikum, there you are. Ugh, I heard Maggie say. There I was not, I said, before DC cropped up in our family, so why should I try to trace it that far back? He just stood there grinning, looking down on me like somebody inspecting a Model A car. Every once in a while, he and Wangero sent eye signals over my head. How do you pronounce this name? I asked. You don't have to call me by it if you don't want to, said Wangero. Why shouldn't I? I asked. If that's what you want us to call you, we'll call you. I know it might sound awkward at first, said Wangero. I'll get used to it, I said. Ream it out again. Well, as soon as we got the name out of the way, Assalamu alaikum had a name twice as long and three times as hard. After I tripped over it two or three times, he, called, he told me just to call him Hakim a barber. I wanted to ask him, was he a barber? But I didn't really think he was, so I didn't ask. You must belong to those beef cattle peoples down the road, I said. They said assalamu alaikum when they met you too, but they didn't shake hands. Always too busy, feeding the cattle, fixing the fences, putting up salt lick shelters, throwing down hay. When the white folks poisoned some of the herd, the men stayed up all night with rifles in their hands. I walked a mile and a half just to see the sight. Hakim a barber said, I accept some of their doctrines, but farming and raising cattle is not my style. They didn't tell me, and I didn't ask, whether Wangero, D, had really gone and married him. We sat down to eat, and right away he said he didn't eat collards and pork was unclean. Wangero, though, went on through the chitlins and cornbread, the greens and everything else. She talked a blue streak over the sweet potatoes. Everything delighted her. Even the fact that we still used the benches her daddy made for the table when we couldn't afford to buy chairs. Oh, mama, she cried. Then she turned, then turned to Hakima Barber. I never knew how lovely these benches are. You can feel the rump prints, she said, running her hands underneath her and along the bench. Then she gave a sigh, and her hand closed over Grandma D's butter dish. That's it, she said. I knew there was something I wanted to ask you if I could have. She jumped up from the table and went over in the corner where the churn stood, the milk in it clabber by now. She looked at the churn and looked at it. This churn top is what I need, she said. Didn't Uncle Buddy whittle it out of a tree you all used to have? Yes, I said. "Uh Uh-huh, she said happily, and I want the dasher too. Uncle Buddy... Whittle that too? asked the barber. D, Wangero, looked up at me. Aunt D's first husband whittled the dash, said oh Aunt D's husband first husband whittled the dash, said Maggie, so low you almost couldn't hear her. His name was Henry, but they called him Stash. Maggie's brain is like an elephant's, Wangero said, laughing. I can use the churn top as a centerpiece for the alcove table, she said, sliding a plate over the churn, and I'll think of something artistic to do with the dasher. When she finished wrapping the dasher, the handle stuck out. I took it for a moment in my hands. You didn't even have to look close to see where hands pushing up the dasher and down to make the butter had left a kind of sink in the wood. In fact, there were a lot of small... There were a lot of small sinks. You could see where thumbs and fingers had sunk into the wood. It was beautiful light yellow wood from a tree that grew in the yard where Big D and Stash had lived. After dinner, D, Wangero, went to the trunk at the foot of my bed and started rifling through it. Maggie hung back, hung back in the kitchen over the dishpan. Out came Wangero with two quilts. They had been pieced by Grandma D, and then Big D and me had hung them on the quilt frames on the front porch and quilted them. One was in the Lone Star pattern, 
and both of them were scraps of dresses Grandma D had worn 50 and more years ago, bits and pieces of Grandpa Gerald's paisley shirts, and one teeny faded blue piece about the size of a penny matchbox. That was from Great Grandpa Ezra's uniform that he wore in the Civil War. Mama, Wanjero said, sweet as a bird, can I have these old quilts? I heard something fall in the kitchen, and a minute later, the kitchen door slammed. Why don't you take one or two of the others, I asked. These old things were just done, done by me and Big D from some tops your grandma pieced before she died. No, said Wangaro. I don't want those. They are stitched uh, around the borders by machine. That'll make them last better, I said. That's not the point said Wanjero. These are all pieces of, dre of dresses Grandma used to wear. She did all the stitching by hand. Imagine! She held the quilts securely in her arms, stroking them. Some of the pieces, like those lavender ones, come from old clothes her mother handed down to her, I said, moving up to touch the quilts. D, Wanjero, moved back just enough so that I couldn't reach the quilts. They already belonged to her. Imagine, she breathed again, clutching them closely to her bosom. The truth is, I said, I promised to give them quilts to Maggie for when she marries John Thomas. She gasped like a bee had stung her. <gasps> Maggie can't appreciate these quilts, she said. She'd probably be backward enough to put them to everyday use. I reckon she would, I said. God knows I've been saving them long enough with nobody using them. I hope she will. I didn't want to bring up how I had offered Dee, Wanjero, a quilt when she went away to college. Then she had told me they were old-fashioned, out of style. But they're priceless, she was saying now, furiously, for she has a temper. Maggie would put them on the bed, and in five years they'd be in rags, less than that. She can always make some more, I said. Maggie knows how to quilt. Dee, Wanjero, looked at me with hatred. You just will not understand. The point is these quilts. These quilts. Well, I said, stumped, what would you do with them? Hang them, she said, as if that was the only thing you could do with quilts. Maggie by now was standing in the door. I could almost hear the sound of her feet, the sound her feet made as they scraped over each other. She can have them, Mama, she said like somebody used to never winning anything of having anything reserved for her. I can remember Grandma, D without the quilts. I looked at her hard. She had filled her bottom lip with checkerberry snuff, and it gave her face a kind of dopey hangdog look. It was Grandma D and Big D who taught her how to quilt herself. She st stood there with her scarred hands hidden in the folds of her skirt. She looked at her sister with something like fear, but she wasn't mad at her. This was Maggie's portion. This was the way she knew God to work. When I looked at her like that, something hit me in the top of my head and ran down to the soles of my feet. Just like when I'm in church and the Spirit of God touches me and I get happy and shout, I did something I never had done before. Hugged Maggie to me, then dragged her on into the room, snatched the quilts out of Miss Wanjero's hands, and dumped them into Maggie's lap. Maggie just sat there on my bed with her mouth open. Take one or two of the others, I said to Dee but she turned without a word and went out to Hakima Barber. You just don't understand, she said, as Maggie and I came out to the car. What don't I understand, I wanted to know. Your heritage, she said. And then she turned to Maggie, kissed her, and said, you ought to try to make something of yourself too, Maggie. It's really a new day for us, but from the way you and Mama still live, you'd never know it. She put on some sunglasses that hid everything above the tip of her nose and her chin. Maggie smiled, maybe at the sunglasses, but a real smile, not scared. After we watched the car dust settle, I asked Maggie to bring me a dip of snuff. And then the two of us sat there, just enjoying, until it was time to go in the house and go to bed. Hmm. So that was everyday use. Like I said, a really famous story in the um, in the short story, you know, canon of American literature. Um, 
yeah, I haven't read it in a long time and I hope you enjoyed it. And I see Susan, your, your note about, about copyright. It's true. I think I'll, what I'll do is, um, when the video posts to Twitch, um, I will, yeah, I can clip out actually, I can clip out of Twitch. So I'll clip, you know, little bits of it, like a little bit from the beginning and a little bit from the middle and a little bit from the end, because yeah, it would be, it would be too bad. Um, if, if, yeah, if, if I got, well, yeah, I, there's, there's copyright, um, claims where if you play music or you, you play something or show something, um, so, and that that's copyrighted, someone can say, you know, this is mine and then you're not paid for it or you can't, there's something, but there's a copyright strike as well. And that's much more serious. And so, yeah, I wouldn't want that to happen. So I will, I will do that. Um, hey, Padma, hi. So, so, uh, Meme Lord, Meme Lord, first time chat. I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, yeah, I will. I will definitely leave the part where they discuss quilts. So, okay. So there's been a lot written about this story. Um, and really interested to hear your thoughts on it. I think, um, oh, I didn't advance the slides too much. Sorry, I was really trying to not totally screw that up. Um, you know, it's and it was written in 1973. Is that what I said? Hang on. Um, yeah, it was written in the 1970s. And so at that time, I mean, <laughs> Part of part of what I love so much about that documentary, 1971, uh, the year that music changed everything, they talked a lot about you know what was happening in the culture, obviously, and like the Black Power movement, um, the return to Africa, you know, kind of sentiment that some people in the Black community had. That was you know the Black Panther stuff, like all of that when Angela Davis was uh, in prison. You know, Aretha Franklin did a um, a uh, benefit concert for her. I mean, that this was really part, I mean, this, this story, when it was written, the character of Wanjero, D, you know, that was a person who, you know, that was a character that probably, <laughs> probably, um, existed for, for many families. And, and, and sometimes there would have been understanding and I suspect sometimes there wouldn't have been. And so there's been a lot of analysis of this story about, you know, Wanjero's role in the story, um, whether it was, you know, whether, you know, is it, was it progress, what she was doing, you know, using different names and, you know, or was it, you know, progress of a kind for the narrator, for the mother to keep the quilts that belonged, you know, to the family, belonged to, to the heritage that stayed on, on the property. I mean, I mean, this is, you don't need me to analyze it too much and I, I don't want to do it, um, poorly but it's 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 really interesting the reason that it makes sense to read it particularly now is that this is happening with quilts right now where it's like you know when Wanjero says you know you don't understand your heritage you know you don't know what you have here but I know you know I'm this you know, cultured person now and I live in the city and I I have you know fabulous style and I go to all these great parties and quilts are amazing and you just don't even know what you have and I'm going to rescue them, right? I'm going to take them away from this house that I've always hated or this place I've always hated, you know, and put them, put them in the Whitney, Whitney Museum of Art, you know, because you just have no idea how valuable they really are, you know? And it's just some, it's something that comes up in with quilts all the time when, you know, wealthy people or wealthy institutions, you know, kind of take quilts out of their natural habitat in a way and give them all this attention and all these all this praise but you know they were valued before you know a lot of them were valued before and maybe we don't need your approval you know so interesting yeah yeah and you know what the thing is with the story by the way i mean i'm pretty sure alice walker's I mean, she's alive <clears throat> and writing and i think it would probably be good for me to clip some stuff out um, and Roxy says that she understands fully kind of the theme of this story. I once even felt the same way about my granny's quilts. Boy, have I learned a lot about the respect my granny's 
really deserve and why those quilts are so precious to me now. Yeah, right. And yeah, word bird nerd, it really is the, the, um, the G's Ben quilt story, which we talk about a lot. And a couple streams ago, we talked a lot about it because there's this new fashion line. Um, I'll just grab it here. Um, there's a new fashion line that um, Bergdorf Goodman, you know, Bergdorf Goodman department store, one of the most expensive department stores, fanciest department stores um, in the world, <laughs> is featuring this fashion designer his new line that he's done with quilt makers of G's Bend. Um, I can't, they won't let me have that one. Um, and, and, and it's another case of like, you know, wealthy people using quilts and especially African-American quilts from G's Bend, African-American made quilts from G's Bend um, in this very highbrow way very, very different environment, right? Taking them and using them in a different, a different way. Um, and <clears throat> it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of weird. We, we, we talked a lot about it. Um, so you should go back and watch that stream, but, um, geez, Bend, Greg, Loren. Yeah. And what I was going to say is that this story pre, it, it came after the Freedom Quilting Bee, which is the real story of the quilters of G's Bend. And that was in the 60s. That was happening in the 60s. I think like the mid 60s. But the G's Bend quilts weren't discovered until, you know, the late 90s. In 2002, they were the ones, the quilts that were hung at the Whitney. This time it was the G's Bend quilts. So this story, Alice Walker's story, predated that by like 30 years, you know? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, S.J. Pepper. Um, you, what you learned from the stream the other night is that there are still department stores. I know, I know, not as many, right? Well, um, yeah, discovered by white people, precisely, precisely, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so now you know the story of everyday use, and and maybe you know thinking about it, thinking on it more, will be will be will be nice. I hope that it was it was okay to read. Um, you know, I, I can't read the room, right? <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully it's cool. Um, okay, so let me do something else here. Let me pull up what we were gonna talk about yesterday. Um, and any, any other thoughts on the story? I know we're not a book club, but if you have thoughts on it, I'm here for it. Um, here's, a, okay. We're not a book club, but we are going to talk about this other book, Patchwork Girl, The Patchwork Girl by L. Frank Baum, because we didn't get there last night and I I, I want to. So, um, <laughs> The Patchwork Girl of Oz. I'm gonna read the whole thing, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so check this out. So I didn't really, I had, I heard about this and I think somebody, somebody told me about it a long time ago, but I've never investigated it. And, oh yeah. Oh, hey, hey Layla. Layla, it's, uh, everybody welcome Layla. You're new and uh, you've joined the chat and I'm so glad that you're here. You come to a great place. It's a, uh, on Sunday, usually I'm sewing along with you. Um, that's the way it's been, but it's been a, a, a lot of uh, things happening this weekend. And so instead I'm doing a, a, a more normal show, although I just read a story, which has never happened before. Interesting. Uh, I'll have to think about, you know, how that went. Um, but, but, but we, and I'm glad that Christmas, hi Christmas, uh, thinks PBS should pick me up. I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great. Um, yeah. Hey. So, we have to, to tell to tell Layla. I need to tell Layla uh, a little bit about about this show. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that. Okay. This show is about um, being curious about quilts, and we're sort of fearless in our curiosity about them. 
And when you're a quilter and you love quilts and you, and you make them, um, it, can, it can happen because there's so much great content out there um, in the quilt world, patterns, Instagram feeds, um, some books still, online workshops, um, fabric, fabric lines, you know, it be, it's, a, it's a culture and it's great. But it can be a bubble. And over the past four or five years, I guess, my jam has been to, to look at quilts in the bigger world, okay? In the, in the world beyond the quilt world. And I'm gonna look at this, okay. To look at the quilts in the world um, that aren't in our bubble um, or stuff that is in the quilt world um, subculture that reaches into the larger culture. And the reason that I think, you know, that other people would, would like this <laughs> is because in my experience giving lectures um, that are more than just trunk shows of my quilts, which I did for a long time, and they're great, you know, they're great. But I noticed that every time I started to incorporate history or a little bit more like analysis, sounds a little highfalutin, but you know, uh, oh good, I'm so glad you like the reading. Okay, good. good. Um, every time I would involve some more like perspective on quilts in a guild talk, um, thumbs up from people. They, they, the people that I was talking to, of course, some people might not have liked it, but it seemed that the vibe was like great, like learning about that there's a story in the Oz like canon or whatever. The, uh, I said canon like nine times this stream. Um, in, in L. Frank Baum's books that he wrote about Oz, there's a book called Patchwork Girl. And I mean, that's amazing. And so learning about, you know, everyday use, this short story by Alice Walker that's just really well known. I mean, sometimes I have to say, sometimes I have said to someone that I make quilts or that I'm into quilts and more than a few times, not a lot of times, but more than a few times, that person that I'm talking to who's outside of quilts completely will say, oh yeah, have you ever read Everyday Use by Alice Walker? I mean, you know, so quilts and that story, I mean, it's just very, the climax of the story is about quilts. And so like quilts are in literature, quilts are in fashion, um, quilts are in um, music, they are, they're, they're everywhere. And once you start looking everywhere for them, I think it just makes your experience as a quilt person all, all the richer. And even when you're not a quilt person, I don't know if the doctor is still in, um, in the chat, but we've had a few people now, a couple people drop in and, and kind of just kind of stay because when you're nerdy about quilts, you come up with some pretty cool stuff. It's not just like, and then, take your stitch and, you know, do a back stitch. It's not technique. We're not talking about technique specifically. You know, this is not for people who know who, who, you know, it's, it's not a how-to show. It's a, it's a why show. Why? Wherefore? It's a wherefore show, not a how-to show, you know? So we look at everything and I hope that you've seen the, the, the back, the back issues of this video magazine. Our friend Mark said, you know, this show's like a video magazine. So hopefully you can catch some back issues. Um, oh, good. Um, oh, good, good, good. Um, excellent. Oh, good. Excellent, excellent. So, so there's always something different. It's always something different. And I, yeah, so I, you know, I would give the lectures and, and I would learn so much great stuff when I was researching for these lectures, but it just, I only have so much time at, in a lecture to talk to you all about all the stuff I find. And so this live stream show on Twitch allows me to, we can all look at it together and I discover things with you. I don't know about Patchwork Girl, but we're gonna find out about it now together. Um, thank you for letting me know that the reading went okay. And if you didn't, if you didn't care for it, <clears throat> it's okay. It's not gonna happen often, <laughs> but I'm really glad that, that you um, indulged that. Uh, good, good, good. Excellent. Story was great. Yeah, Malrose, my family doesn't appreciate quilting as heritage anymore, and I wish I could go back a generation or two and chat with my great-grandma about quilting. Yeah, yeah. Good writing gives me goosebumps, says Sue, indeed. And Layla, our new, the newest nerd, 
Um, I've only been quilting since March of this year. Hey, oh, I have questions for you. I found this beautiful craft trying to find something to keep my mind busy after my son passed away. I'm so sorry to hear that this uh, is was the circumstance, Layla. It has been such an awesome journey. I love watching your videos and learning the enormous history behind quilting. Thank you. It is my absolute pleasure, and I'm really glad you made a live. Um, as you'll see, the people who, the, the fellow nerds, you know, uh, there's not a higher, more like loving term I could call these people <laughs> um, than, you know, quilt nerds. They're pretty extraordinary, and we're getting to know each other more all the time, and it's just so much fun. Um, and Pampries, thank you for being here and chatting. It's beautiful. Uh, good, good. Yeah, I love the history, too, that's being uncovered. Uh, Roxy, I think about that often when, <laughs> when you guilt. I know you meant quilt. Um, you remember going outside after supper, talking with your grandma, your granny, back in the day when she would escape to cool off after cooking supper. You wish you could do that now and talk quilts. Totally. Thanks, Susan. Music. Yeah, you know, we haven't talked about quilts in music. We should totally do that. Our list is so long. It's endless. It's endless, people. It's endless. Um, and Christmas says, I'm a, by no means a quilt nerd. To, 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 to you, uh, quilts is, is the theme. The story and history keep you paying attention. I did not do a very good job of translating your comment into the third person, but um, second person. But I get it. Yeah. Okay. And I think I think that if you if you like the stories and the history, you may be inching toward nerdery a few quilts that grandma made mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you will find uh, kindred souls uh here layla um mm -hmm, indeed quilt appreciation that's good that's good quilt appreciation i like that yeah, quilt appreciation day every day is quilt appreciation day on quilt nerd so all right let's continue there's our quilt. Okay. Patchwork Girl. I want to find some other images for you. A little light on images tonight. Usually it's just a it's just a feast. Patchwork Girl, L. Frank Baum. Okay. Let's look at some of these book covers, shall we? Mmm, yes. Now is our, our feast begins. Look at this. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna read to you the description as we look at these book covers. Oh, they're fabulous, aren't they? Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, Faith, I love that. Quilts are sewn together with humanity. Indeed. Indeed. There's nothing like a damn quilt. I mean, you can really like your, you know, duck decoys and your, you know, you can be a kite maker, kite collector. That sounds cool. Amazing. That sounds so cool. I love kites, but like, you can't sleep under a kite, you know? And you can't like, well, I don't know. I don't know any, why kites just came to me. I looked up at the sky. All right, look at these. Look at these editions of Patchwork Girl. Illustrated first edition. Hmm. Has anyone ever, has anyone ever read this? Someone said, I think someone said last night that they had read <clears throat> Patchwork Girl. I gotta wet my whistle. Mm. Wow, here's the patchwork girl kind of tarted up a little bit. <laughs> the patchwork girl got she got a glow up. Patchwork girl just kind of kind of glow up. Uh oh. Okay, speaker doesn't seem to work. Okay, okay, Layla, I hope you're. We hope you get your your speaker back. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. This patchwork girl is kind of kind of sexy sexy um but this one this one is first edition okay let me let me tell you what this is about okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they are amazing okay we'll just we'll keep looking at these while i while i read oh wow Whew. hey you know what when this show gets like you know really like you know there's just like a million subscribers there's like 15 million quilters in the united states alone okay i'm saying there could be a million people watching the show at some time at some point the chat would be a little bit crowded so we don't need to shoot for that but um it'd be cool to like have like a, a producer you know who could like show like graphics and stuff 
so you wouldn't have to see me like Googling things and pulling up, you know what I'm saying. But I think I'm getting better all the time. Okay, Patchwork Girl of Oz by L. Frank Baum is a children's novel. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Holmes. Patchwork It Girl. I see you. I see you. Patchwork Girl of Oz <clears throat> by L. Frank Baum is a children's novel. The seventh, the seventh in the Oz series. Characters include the Woozy, Ojo, it's O-J-O, so it's either Ojo or Ojo, Spanish for eyes or I. Uh, I feel like it's probably Ojo. I could be wrong, but anyway, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you that this book was written in 1913. 1913. Okay. Characters include the Woozy, Ojo the Unlucky, Unk Nunky, <laughs> Dr. Pipped, Scraps, the patchwork girl, the patchwork girl's name is Scraps. The patchwork girl's name is Scraps. Wow, that's a really, ooh, that's a really good high res image. We, we'll, we'll look at this thing here. Um, hmm, she's kind of scary. Okay, sorry, Scraps, Scraps. It's a good name for a little dog, Scraps. Uh, and others. There are other characters. The book was first published on July 1st, 1913 with illustrations by John R. Neal. Um, in 1914, Baum adapted the book to film through his Oz Film Manufacturing Company. Okay. In the previous Oz books, um, in the previous Oz book, The Emerald City of Oz, some of you may know these. You may, you may know these. Oh, Myra says Audible has the Patchwork Girl available. She knows what she's going to read next. Scrappy. Yeah, yeah, Scrappy. That Patchwork Girl, she's Scrappy. Um, in the previous Oz books, so the sixth book in the series, it would have been The Emerald City of Oz. Maybe you all know these Oz books. Magic was used to isolate Oz from all contact from, with the outside world. Baum did this to end the Oz series. Oh, but was forced to restart the series with this book due to financial hardship. <gasps> Interesting. He needed the dough. He had to piece together a little money. In the prologue, he reconciles Oz's isolation with the appearance of a new Oz book by explaining that he contacted Dorothy in Oz via wireless telegraphy. And she obtained Ozma's permission to tell Bomb this story. Whoa! It's like in a soap opera when like the character dies, but then everybody freaks out because they loved the character and so they magically didn't die and they're back the next season. It is cool. It's so good. I mean, good storyteller. That is really pretty awesome. He uses like the telegraph to get to Dorothy and Oz and she's like, Okay, you can do one more. I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's some like JK Rowling level story weaving, right? Um, the book was dedicated to Sumner Hamilton Britton, the young son of one of his publishers. Okay. <laughs> if you please publish one more book, please. I'll dedicate it to your son, Mr. Publisher. Okay, I'm going to tell the plot. I'm going to tell the plot because we have to know. We have to know. Um, we have to know. But if you, but it, spoiler alert, for sure. Look at some of this art. Yeah, spoiler alert for sure, because um, it's the plot. Here's another dishy patchwork girl. Or maybe that's, I don't know what's going on there. Why does every female lead character have to end up, you know, showing her ankles? <laughs> I mean, you know, she could, this is, this, she looks freaking dope and there you know she looks great she looks totally great hmm hmm well this is interesting i mean does scraps does scraps look african-american perhaps i mean am i seeing like you know like what's what's going on here because because i'm seeing the, the skin tone unless that's fabric is different right from this skin tone you know, I mean, 
Is that, I've never noticed it. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. You know, are we going to discover just some horrible, you know, truth that L. Frank Baum was a racist person? Oh, God. Okay, let's just, no, 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 let's just, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe it's fantastic. I have no idea. Okay. <sighs> Please don't be awful. Okay. Ojo, here's the plot. Okay, spoiler alert. Her skin was fabric. Okay. 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 Let's see here. Okay, yeah, this is the... Okay, Okay. so let's find out. Okay, so Ojo, known as Ojo the Unlucky, lives in poverty with his laconic uncle, Unk Nunky. <sighs> this is pronounced Unk, or spelled Unk Nunky. Probably really fun to say if you're like, you know, a kid, right? Unk Nunky. It is fun to say, period. Okay. Um, Ojo the Unlucky lives with his uncle, Unk Nunky, in the woods of the of the Munchkin country. In the woods of the Munch, Munchkin country. Um, in Oz. They visit their neighbor, the magician, Dr. Pipt, who is about to complete the six-year process of preparing the magical powder of life, which can bring inanimate objects to life. Pipt's wife has constructed a life-size stuffed girl out of patchwork and wishes her husband to animate her to serve as an obedient household servant. They also meet another of Pitt's creations, Bungle, an extremely vain talking cat. Okay, here's Bungle over here, this blue cat. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, Bungle, sorry. Mm, an extremely vain talking cat made of glass. The powder of life successfully animates the patchwork girl, but an accident causes both Pip's wife and Uncle Nunky to be turned into stone. Dr. Pip tells o Ojo that he must obtain five ingredients to make a compound to counteract the petrification spell. Oh, wow. Okay, that's the uh, Wizard of Oz. Okay, what's this one? Um, Ojo and the patchwork girl who calls herself Scraps along with Bungle, embark on a journey to obtain the magic ingredients, a six-leafed clover, the wing of a yellow butterfly, water from a dark well, a drop of oil from a live man's body, and three hairs from a woozy's tail. Scraps exhibits a wild, carefree personality and is prone to spontaneous recita recitation of nonsense poetry. Amazing. After several adventures, they meet a woozy, a blocky quadruped, who agrees to let them have three hairs from, oh, this is a great illustration. Well, creepy, oh, it's so creepy. Who agrees to let them have three hairs from its tail, but they're unable to remove the hairs, so they take Woozy along with them. That's cute, that's cute. Okay, oh yeah, Return to Oz, Word Bird Nerd. We, that came up yesterday. I hate that movie, that movie is so scary. So scary. Oh, SJ, interesting. Oh my God, she should. She totally should. I should tell her. I bet she doesn't know about it. I bet Tula doesn't know about Patchwork Girl. I bet she doesn't. I should, I'll tell her, I'll text her. Hey, <laughs> I just named Trap Tula. <laughs> I can text Tula, okay. Um, she's such a super superstar. Okay, the party's captured by large anim an an animate plants, but they are rescued by the fortuitous arrival of the Shaggy Man. He leads them to the Emerald City to meet Pri Princess Ozma. Yeah. Princess Ozma shows up in Return to Oz, right? Doesn't she? Oh, Joe can, oh no, no, no. It's really, it's really complicated. Okay, I don't know. I'm not gonna read, the, well, mm -hmm. we wanna know about Patchwork Girl. Okay, so, and I'm not gonna spoil it because it sounds pretty interesting. So I'm not gonna read the whole plot. Oh, they meet Jack Pumpkinhead. Jack Pumpkinhead is in Return to Oz too. God, oof. That, that movie, you know what? Hang on. There's another place I want to look for Patchwork Girl. Let me just see if there's anything else about Patchwork Girl. Okay, here, this is interesting. So you read this story. Hey, Crafts Brothers. Oh, wait, you, you've been here. <laughs> you've been here. Um, <laughs> shaggy Man, what was Frank smoking? Indeed. Um, hey, M. Sue John, how's it going? We're talking about talking about books today. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk about books the whole time. We're gonna talk about something uh, different next. Here's some background and analysis on Patchwork Girl. Let me see, what other, what other pictures can we get here? Um, ooh, look at that. 
the Patchwork Girl of Oz. Hmm. Okay. In reference to the Patchwork Girl of Oz, one of Baum's letters to his publisher, Sumner Britton, of Riley and Britton, offers unusual insight on Baum's manner of creating his Oz fantasies. Hmm. A lot of thought is required on one of these fairy tales. This is a quote. The odd characters are a sort of inspiration, liable to strike me at any time. Okay, so this is bomb talking, obviously. But the plot and the plan of adventures takes me considerable time. I live with it, day by day, jotting down on old slips of paper the various ideas that occur, and in this way, getting my materials together. Oh, that's interesting. What? Okay. She's not made of fabric there or something. I don't know. Um, I live with it day by day, jotting down. Okay, the new Oz book is at this stage. So he's speaking about Patchwork Girl of Oz here in this letter. The new Oz book is at this stage, but it's a long way from being ready for the printer yet. I must rewrite it, stringing the incidents into consecutive order, elaborating the characters, etc. Then it's typewritten. Then it's revised, retypewritten, and sent off to Riley in Britain. Okay, I thought he was going to be like, the Patchwork Girl is my... my not Mea Coppola, not Magna Carta. Magnum Opus. She is my Magnum Opus. Um, oh, wait, wait, what, what, what? At least one point in his life, Baum stated that he considered The Patchwork Girl of Oz, quote, one of the two best books of my career. I didn't, I just hoped it would be that way, but it is that way. At least one point in his life, Baum stated he considered The Patchwork Girl of Oz one of the two best books of his career, the other being The Sea Fairies. Never heard of it, so he didn't even consider The Wizard of Oz his best work. The book was a popular success, selling just over 17,000 copies, though this was somewhat lower than the total for the previous book, The Emerald City of Oz, and marked the start of a declining marked the start of a trend in declining sales for the Oz books that would not reverse until the Tin Woodman of Oz in 1918. <sighs> Fascinating. Baum wrote and produced a film based on the book titled Patchwork Girl of Oz. Do you think we're going to YouTube next? We are. Um, it was made by Baum Studio, the Oz Film Manufacturing Company, released in 1914, so that came out fast. He also wrote a musical stage adaptation of the book circa 1913 with composer mm -hmm. However, this musical was never staged. <gasps> Excerpts have occasionally been performed at various annual conventions of the International Wizard of Oz Club. <laughs> That's so interesting. Boom. Is it boom? Am I saying that right or not? Hey, Alistrina. Oh yeah, totally. Oh, totally. Yes, yes. Yes, Alistrina, please, please. Sorry, I was too busy reading that stuff and I didn't see please post that link to the Gutenberg um thing and we'll look at the illustrations there so interesting yeah oh yeah great oh yeah Dee Marie is like I was glad to read Wicked I needed to cleanse all the themes of the Wizard of Oz movie agreed it's dark stuff and it, it's dark the Wizard of Oz stuff is dark in a in a nightmare way you know it's scary it's not like horror movie scary it's like nightmare scary where just stuff's weird and 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 very unsettling to me uh i mean even to say that her her skin was made of fabric like can't you just say she's made of fabric but like her skin was made of fabric it's just like oh, okay all right mombi oh mombi had her heads she changed oh okay let's see if we got this link okay here we go wizard of oz club yeah if somebody is in the Wizard of Oz Club, I am sorry that I just... Oh, cool. Look at this. Look at this. Um, but, okay, before we look at this, can we just can we just recognize... Just recognize... Wow. This is... That's kind of awesome. That's awesome. And that goes against what I was going to say, which is that, like, you know, we go from, like, a patchwork doll-looking, you know you know, creature, character, whatever. And then it just has to become like, you know, sexy and like, it does in a lot of cases become sort of like a, 
Well, we saw them up, up there. You know, these like dishy patchwork girls. Anyway, I should just get over it. But it ha you know, you see it happening. Not always. <laughs> and then there's this one. Patchwork Girl of Oz Special Edition. Well, anyway, anyway. Okay, let's let's look at let's look at this. I've been on my high horse a lot lately. I have to have to be aware of that. Oh, snap! Okay. Thank you, Alistrina. This is cool. Wow. It's a little gnat. Um, great. So Project Gutenberg. Yeah, she's totally written as a female clown who doesn't give a flip. She's not sexy at all. Thank you, Oz Mouse. Or, I'm gonna call you Mouse. Thanks, Mouse. Exactly. She can be awesome and amazing. She does not have to be, oh, sexy. But maybe this is like, oh, do you think she probably turns into a real girl or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I, I do want to read it. So, I'm sorry, I interrupted myself. Like, that never happens. Is Project Gutenberg, does this mean that there's no copyright at this point? You know? <laughs> You'll take mouse. Good. Oz mouse. Oz mouse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why I said that. Interesting. <laughs> there's the dedication to his publisher's child. <laughs> oh, Chicago. Interesting. There was a lot of publishing in Chicago at the turn of the 20th century, that's for sure. My old condo was near Printer's Row. Older than 75 years old. Okay, okay, interesting. So yeah, so you can read it on Project Gutenberg. Oh, oh, this is really cool. I'm not going to read it all. You got to read it. But this is his, from L. Frank Baum. He says, through the kindness of Dorothy Gale of Kansas, da 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 he talks about how he contacted her to ask if he could tell the story. That's pretty badass, you have to admit. That's pretty cool. Oh, and scissors and spools and things. Okay, so that's that's just great. Now let's see if YouTube has anything for us about the patchwork girl of Oz. Let me pull this. She must like turn into like a real girl. I like her like this. Okay, the patchwork. I, I am intrigued by this musical. Patchwork Girl of Oz. Okay, lots of people reading it out loud. Oh my gosh, whoa. What? Looks a little scary. Oh boy. <gasps> what? Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm going to show you. I just have to make sure. What is the. Oh boy, y'all. Uh oh. <laughs> I think. I think we have the movie. I think we have the movie right now. This is the movie. I mean, this is the movie. 1914, this is the movie. Oh my God. Do you want to watch this movie? I mean, should I just play this movie and we talk about it? Let's try. Let's see what happens, okay? Let's see what happens when we play this movie. You know, like, is it going to be good? Why, why not just give it a try, right? Oh! It is October. <laughs> Halloween is but a few days away. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, and, and you know, this show, this show is like, you come, you go, you drop in, you watch it later. This is why the show is great because I, I cannot be contained by the length of a lecture. There's just too much to talk about. Okay, well, uh, let's take a break. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna get chips. And we're gonna watch we're going to watch Patchwork Girl. I mean, <laughs> where else are you going to watch this? But on a show called Quilt Nerd, formerly known as Quilt Church. All right. BRB people, get some snacks. It's 50 minutes. It's 50 minutes long. So, you know, it's not like a two hour film. It may be good that it is only that long. Okay. 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 See you in just five minutes. Okay. Ex excellent home. Same. Okay.
Okay. <laughs> Here, oh wait, I got the mic. Okay, yeah, great. Um, so let's watch a movie. Um, I got some crisps. The end of the bag. All little shards. Um, glass of wine. Small. And uh, let's do this. So here we go. Hey, I've got this uh, Coke Zero Two rocks. But it's it's almost six, and if I drink that that soda, I'm gonna be up all night. Um, was there a troll in the chat? Yeah, I need mods. That's like that's on my uh, it's on my Twitch to do list. Tor sort of near the top. You made coffee because it's only 10 a.m. in California. Is it still raining? Was it raining? Someone, someone, there's rain in California somewhere. <laughs> someone mentioned it, but I don't know if it was USJ. Okay. So this movie was made in 1914. I don't know. I hope the sound's good. I hope we're good. Uh, okay, here we go. This is, this was made, remember, by him, produced by his company, Wendy in Washington. Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, and... You know, this is all about us talking about it, stopping, you know, it's it's got to be transformative content. Well, this is probably copyright free. I, I don't know. But but it is transformative content. If you stop and give commentary and talk about stuff, it is safe to play something like this. But you have to, uh, you know. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's get started. Sorry, sorry. No sound yet. Don't worry. Still no sound. <gasps> it's a silent movie. No, okay. Huh. Hang on. Oh my God, that's so terrifying. So it's a silent movie. Right? So, if that's true, ugh. listen, lady, <laughs> um, hang on now. If that's true, then what I want to try to do is find that music. 1916. It's 19, yes, four, 14. Hang on one second now. Um, Oh man. Okay, hang on. I just found another version. Hang on now. Uh, oh, 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 I got one with the music. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, and it's better. It's better. It's better. Wow, wow. Okay, okay. Here we go. I, I, uh, it's that woman's face. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, I found one because what I was going to do is Google the music, you know, to play, but this one has it with it. It has it, it has it, it has it here. So here we go. We're doing this. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that does that. Oh, here, okay. We're going to play this and we're going to play this. Here we go. Is that right? Did I pick the right one? Sorry, y'all. It's it's just it's difficult. It's difficult. It's not easy. There's this this two desktop thing, and it's just annoying. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Ready. 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 Yeah, I think maybe this was added. The the music to this was added later. Sorry, now we're good. Here we go. Shock. Oh yeah. J. Farrell McDonald. Copyright by in 1914, L. Frank Baum. O. 
Ojo and Unk Nunky. I'm going to read it to you because I know you're doing other things. Also, it's jumping around. Um, Ojo, a munchkin boy. Played by Violet McMillan. Unk Nunky, Ojo's only friend and guardian. Played by Frank Moore. No more loaves on the bread tree that grows in our yard. Tell me, Unk Nunky, why are we so poor? Oh, hunger. Let us go to the Emerald City where there is plenty for all. No one ever starves in the land of Oz, but to get... What? But to get food, we must go where it is. <laughs> What's up with Nunky? He's really... He's neglecting his charge. I mean, he's... And he's talking to himself. Sorry. Okay, what I miss. <laughs> Yeah, it's just getting worse and worse. It's interesting that little there's a girl playing the little little boy, right? Ojo. They're gonna go to Oz. Hold on, hold on. Is that what I missed when I just had to plug in that lamp? He needs crisps. He does. Yeah, the piano is high energy. I know. Thanks for the vocals. Okay, cool, cool. I I, I will continue to do that. Um, he does need crisps. There's that's a scarecrow hat. So true. So, so are they going to Oz? Is that what happened? I might have missed a, a card. It looks like Ojo is happy. <sighs> so weird. <sighs> oh, wow. Off to Oz, then. Okay. Dr. Pipped, the Crooked Magician, played by Raymond... Oh, stop it. I guess I do have to pause it when they... People read faster in 1914, apparently. Dr. Pipped, the Crooked Magician. We're still in the credits. Played by Raymond Russell. And Margolot, his wife. Played by Harris Drenet. Interesting. So there's, ooh, he look at the crooked magi magician. He's, <laughs> Dr. Pipped has been six years making a magic powder of life. <laughs> you know, the magic powder of life, sorry. Oh, and Nanette, what's her name? Yep, yep, it was extra drama, right? Extra dramatic, more, more this. Look, 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 look at that house. It's a house. <laughs> I'm tired doing my own work. Hurry and finish that magic powder, and I'll make a servant girl and bring her to life with it. Oh, the wife is like, do something for me, honey. Make me a servant so I don't have to do all your laundry. Margot searches for material to make a servant girl. 
That was her idea. Clever girl. Oh, what a mess. Oh yeah, she needs help. She needs some assistance. Why is she dressed like a maid? Ugh. Jaseva. Jaseva. It's kind of a pretty name. Jaseva, the magician's daughter. And her sweetheart. Dan Danks the munchkin. Her daughter's kind of kinky. <laughs> Oh yeah, exactly. The magic powder which crooks are still are still selling. That's right. He was a chef. He was a cook. That Dr. Pipped. Okay, so oh, this is the daughter and her munchkin lover. Wow. Okay. Oh boy. Hmm. Sweethearts, eh? Oh, oh, he wants to get married. He's proposed to her. Oh, she's happy. Yes, I will marry you. I love your eyeliner. Oh, there's munchkins They're dancing. Because we're in munchkin land, right? <laughs> What's in those rum? Oh, oh, we have a quilt. We have a quilt. What's in those rum flavored crisps? Exactly. Balsamic vinegar and salt. Okay, here we have our quilt. Oh, Carol Himfel. MST3K this is one of my favorite shows of all time, so this is why we get along. Exactly. I thought of the same thing. So she's got this she's got this patchwork. Okay, they've met clearly. Mr. Pipped is he's been inside a long time working on his magic powder. Mule, a waif and stray. Played by Mr. Fred Woodward. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Okay. Oh God. Oh my. Literally nothing. Let's continue. <laughs> Did you say there was rum around? I don't even know what the, I don't I have no idea. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so she's okay. So she needs she needs her servant. What is this? She, she has a. Was it a magic wand or something? She just picked up a stick. She's got a stick. Oh yes, it's a magic wand. What did I tell ya? I get it. Oh, ooh, we have special effects. Oh God, oh my, oh. Oh, it's so weird. It looks like some, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Do you see what's happening? <gasps> Whoa! Are you okay? Are you okay? Is everybody okay out there? <laughs> it's it doesn't take much to entertain folks. Correct. Um Yeah. So <laughs> Uh okay, yes. Speak okay, SJ has a question about about powdered glue. Um Okay, let's see. Uh, Carol, instead of making clothes out of quilts, they're gonna make people. Seems wrong. Agreed. Um, I relate to the to the state of the craft room. Yep, yep. Many people are recognizing the craft room. This could have been filmed in my craft room. Magic. Yep. A world during world pandemic. The horse. I know. Magic powder. Stop motion in 1914. Amazing. You know what, Padma? Agreed. Agreed. You're not over the donkey. Neither am I. I actually. Let's watch that little bit again. Let's watch that doll come together, or the patchwork girl come together. It's pretty amazing. Well, yep. Yeah, stop motion. Wow, wow. Look at the hand. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Oh, the skirt. That's amazing, the skirt. She did it. You did it, girl. Oh, there goes the horse. 
Wow, it's so weird. Huh. This is perfect for October, Halloween. Oh God. That was cute. And by, by the way, when I'm like, oh my God, that's so weird. I also love it. It's theater, right? They didn't say directed by blah, blah, blah. They said staged, staged by this particular person, right? It's a stage play. They are just taking photographs, essentially taking many, 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 many photographs of a play in action, right? That's all movies are, it's just photographs. Um, and I love that, and I love that donkey. I, <laughs> that's a weird donkey and you love donkeys. I, I think it's wonderful. I mean, somebody is playing that donkey and it looks really, it's really amazing. I mean, it's really amazing. So. Respect, much respect, much respect. Also, it's terrifying and strange. Okay. <sighs> Oof. Oh boy. What is he doing? All right, he's making things. Okay, she's. Wow. Okay, so and, and so, what is happening here? What is this? What is this subplot? They've gone, okay, just seriously. So there's the magic, there's this patchwork girl being made. And then it's a collab. It's a joint effort with the magician and his wife. And then we've got Unc Nunkin and Ojo, the little kid. And they need money. They need food because the fruit tree, the magic bread tree does not give them food anymore. Okay. And then we have the lovers. We have the magician's daughter, right? The magician's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see you, I see you, uh, Val. You're very funny. Um, so the, the lovers, we don't know much more about the lovers, but those are munchkins dancing around. Did I miss anything? I'm serious. Did I miss anything about like, you know? We may, we may more maybe be revealed here. Oh, that's his house. The munchkins are dancing outside of his house. Okay. 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 What, what's going on? Give us some dialogue. Give us... Can you tell us what's happening? What? Okay. They've gained entry. It says magician on his on his above his door. That's really cool. I like that. Magician. <clears throat> when she when did she turn into Kim Control? It's very funny. Yeah, exactly. He is definitely on magic powder. I'm just saying, I've seen it happen. magician we need bread our bread tree is broken okay yes okay <laughs> exactly so it's like I mean we're playing charades a little bit so she's like I want her to come to life but what do they have to do with it meanwhile magician he's doing nothing he's not lifting a finger End of part one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is the... Okay. Comedy. Com okay. Oh, no. She has no brains. Wow. Really? Okay. Ugh. She needs stabilizer. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool nerd joke if I ever heard one. It's great. 
Hey, wait. Um, okay, great. Hey, blue bricks. I'm glad. Good, 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 good for you. You should, you should have a good stream. Um, yeah, this is less great. Um, Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. He's operating a bellows. Okay, that's fair. And Carol's like, it's like Rumpelstiltskin. Make the doll alive and we'll give you food. This is a, a good uh, theory of what's happening. It's rude. Yeah. She, oh my God. Holmes. Holmes, you're going to get a timeout. No, you're not. You're going to get a, a cookie for that. That's very funny. Okay. Oh, no, she has no brains, but the fewer the brains, the better the servant. So great. Problematic. What? What are you doing? Yeah. The donkey right now, he's stealing the show. I'm sorry. It just kind of is. There's a cupboard. Okay, here's this powder, right? Here's the magic stuff. Cleverness. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I can see. Cleverness, ingenuity, obedience, I think. Yeah. Mm hmm. Can't read the other ones, but. Cleverness, ingenuity, which one? Judgment, oh, oh God, judgment? Oh, judgment, like, like good judgment. Like, okay, obedience, all right. These are all the things a good servant should have, right? Judgment, obedience, ingenuity, great. All the things, cleverness. Well, I don't like my servants to be too clever. She's great. Ojo slyly gives the patchwork girl brains. Here we go. Slyly gives the patchwork girl brains. Here it goes. Oh, she was like digging a hole in it. Oh, she was cutting. Okay. Don't need that stuffing. Oh, this might be terrifying, y'all. It, it might be. Yes. Oh, okay, great, great. Alistrina's got all the... What's Poesi? I feel like... That's a great word. I mean, the root is poet, like... <gasps> K-Pak. Well played. Well played, Marianne. Oh, the donkey's there. actor is like, can I please do something else than ride this bicycle? The powder of life is nearly ready. Okay, so it wasn't the powder of life that, that Oho, Ojo was putting in there. Oh, 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 okay. is kind of nice, right? I mean, it doesn't feel... It feels good. I like it. The powder of life is burning. It's a cauldron. Okay, the lovers. We have the lovers. Oh. It's a crack up. There wasn't anything in that, but that's okay. Powder of life. It's happening. All of his, all of his bicycle riding paid off. It's working. Wow, wow. Look at the film, how it's damaged, right? On the side. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh God. Oh, uh, wait, what is, what is, who is that? Is that, what is that? What, who is that? Is that Unk Nunkin? Why does he look like a literal horror? Why does he look like Mike Myers? Poetry. Okay. Oh, good. Alistrina. Thank you. Alistrina keeping things erudite. 
while I'm like, Ugh! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he turned to stone? They did? Wait a minute, I forgot that part. They did? Thank you, Christmas, it's nightmare fuel. Exactly. This is a quilt show. If you just came in and you don't know what this is, if Twitch like recommended you watch this, usually we're talking about, well, we're talking about quilts because we're watching a film called The Patchwork Girl of Oz. Obviously, <laughs> who hasn't seen it? Um, too much magic dust. And that's what they said. That's the, that is true, right? That's what happened is that they, they got doused with magic dust. Yes, Holmes. Okay. Well, wait. <laughs> okay. They've been petrified. Turned <clears throat> turned snow. Okay. Okay. It's terrifying. Ugh. To make more powder of life would mean stirring four kettles with both hands and both feet for six long, weary years. And I am too tired to undertake the task because I have been doing that already for nine years. To make more of it. Why do you need more of it? <sighs> mm. Oh, to unpetrify them. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Has anybody seen Leatherface? That's a movie, right? Okay. Oh boy. Wow. Wow. An acrobat. That's cool. I mean, tumbler. Oh, <laughs> that bunch of scraps has caused all our trouble. It's a man inside the costume. 1000%. I didn't even mention or remark on that because it's so obviously a man. <laughs> hey, gender is, gender is fluid. It's disturbing, yeah, because then it went obviously from a person into a doll. Magic recipes or something? Antidotes for ye liquids of petrification. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Um, you wonder if the doll and the donkey will be seen together. I am here for it. Hairs from, oh yeah, we read this, right? In the little, the little, um, the thing from Wikipedia, right? Hairs from a, a woozy's tail and a six leaved clover and a, mm -hmm. and, and, and a gill of water from a dark well. Uh, ingredients, put the, cook them and then, and then the petrified will, will, will something. It'll work. Yep, yep, say it again. Read the recipe twice. Always read the recipe twice. I will find the dark well. He's got pretty scary makeup on, actually. Some weird prosthetics. I hate, I hate to go leave my love here alone. Oh, I hate to go leave my love here alone. Father, can't you reduce him in size so that I can take poor Danks with me? Been there. <laughs> this is what you ask when you're a magician's daughter. You're like, dad, reduce my love. Oh, so she's the one who said she'd find the well, obviously. Okay, so she's gonna go find the well. Why is she taking, what is she taking with her? What is that, a hat? Ojo and Jaseva, Jaseva, go to find a woozy and a six leaf clover. There's a quest. There's a quest, of course. Oh, that's her hat. Kind of fabulous, part three. These are the munchkins. We're in Oz, after all. What? Why does everybody... Why is it all about the pelvis? Okay, here's Patchwork Girl. Huh. 
beware of the woozy. Oh my god. My husband has just come in. Eric? Eric? Yeah. We're watching an old silent film. It's terrifying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just cast a girl. Like... Is the patchwork girl too floppy to get in? <laughs> hmm. Well, it says beware the woozy people. I should shut this door. Poor Eric. He didn't ask for this. Dude. Oh, maybe it's like the patchwork girl can't die <laughs> because... She's an inanimate thing. The Woozy, played by Mr. Fred Woodward. Woodard. Oh, wow. 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 You gotta admit, like, that's cool. Right? Hey, bye, bye, Sue. Thanks for coming. Um, the Woozy will be the mule actor. Oh yeah, that's who I think he is. I mean, this guy is good. He's good, he gets all these parts. Let's see. <laughs> Padma. I love this chat. Y'all are the best. I mean, that is a pretty amazing piece of theater, right? It's pretty awesome. And remember, this did become a musical, Frank Baum made The Patchwork Girl of Oz into a musical. But it's not performed, but it exists. Huh. Wow, I love that. That's very beautiful to me. I mean, it's just so... Very Dada. This was Dada time, right? Mr. Woozy, we want three hairs from the end of your tail. How does the scrap... How does the scrap the Patchwork Girl of Oz talk? <sighs> Mr. Woozy. <laughs> Presumably, the Patchwork Girl speaks in dulcet tones. The cat reminds you of your daughter's Minecraft game. The Woozy? Yeah. See, we talk about games on the Quilt Nerd Show. We twitch. I love it. They're like, yo, remember us? We need to turn my boyfriend back into a human size. The only way to get the three hairs is to take the woozy with us. Great, I like the woozy a lot. He's so cute. Hmm. It's really, it's really something the person doing this. I can't climb out, but if you can make me angry, my eyes will flash fire and burn a hole through the fence. <laughs> good, good thing to have around. Somebody who can do that. So where, where is the actor's head? You know? <laughs> Cubism, thank you. Y'all are very fun. Holmes. Sante? Sante? All right. Can we get the woozy out of the thing now? He is very, hey Natalie, he is very accommodating. He's like, eh, what am I doing? Free at last. He's burning a hole in the thing. Well, if he can burn a hole through, why didn't he do it before? <laughs> it's a fair question. 
Aww. About halfway through the movie. <laughs> What? Are you serious? What's happening right now? Is it... It's trying to climb it, right? That's all it's trying to do. The arrival of Ginger. A maid from the Emerald City. Okay, so she's a maid from the Emerald City. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Wall of Optical Illusion. Oh. Hmm. I love the Woozy. He's my favorite character. Ginger falls in love with the statue of Danks. <gasps> Whoa. That was fast. What? Okay. Just gotta go with it. You gotta go with it. You see the wall, but it's not there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Okay. 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 Yep. Yep. Sorry. Okay, you see the wall, but it's not there. Follow me and I will prove it. They're going to walk through the wall. Right? You know, we could really play whatever music we wanted over this. Speaking of copyright. But... That'd be fun. Yeah, Pink Floyd's The Wall would really, really, really work. You know? What's public domain? <laughs> I know, the donkey can't hold a candle to the... Oh, wow. To the woozy. Okay, they got through that. Yellow Brick Road vibe. It's, that's scary. I'm sorry. It's not natural. What? Oh, take care. It is, it is against the law of Oz to pluck a six-leaved clover. Okay. But Ojo found one. The soldier with the green whiskers guards. Oh, the soldier with the green whiskers guards the gate of the Emerald City. Hmm. He's very bad at his job. He needs some magic powder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ojo breaks the law. Wow. Wow. Doing crimes. What was that look? <laughs> that girl yonder. Oh my. Really? Really, Ojo? Wow, okay, that girl yonder has stolen a six-leaf clover. Framing the, the maid who just showed up, fell in love, didn't ask for any of this, really. It sucks. She's, yep. Oh, what, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I was wrong. Now I understand. That was the maid ratting out Ojo, who I thought 
was a boy played by a girl. It's a girl. Sorry. There's a lot happening. It's a very thin person. Too thin? That statue belongs to me. Someone stole her boyfriend? Oh yeah, the, the maid? It's funny when your boyfriend's a small stone and someone steals it. <laughs> it's jaunty. The royal barracks. Ojo is a munchkin boy. Okay. Yeah, right? Okay, thank you, Alistrina. Thank you. You actually have the text. The guardian of the gate. That, it's great. I mean, the, the painted painting, right? You can tell. Patrick Girl, Guardian of the Gate. Hmm. When was vaudeville? Like, what was like the, the, the golden age of vaudeville? I know it was before this, right? The soldier beset by the munchkins rings the great alarm bell of Oz, right? At Oz, the gates to Oz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slaps, it is. It's, it's slapstick, it is. Yeah. Oh, mm. the bell. what is going on? What's happening here? Harem? Oh no, female soldiers. All right, okay. This is an army of badass women here. <laughs> She's so bored. <laughs> okay. End of part three. Yep, we're getting there. We have 20 minutes left to really know what the patchwork girl, what it means to be the star of this show. I haven't seen a lot of her, right? Okay. Oh, those are great. Look at those, the robes. Awesome. That's really beautiful, that costume. <laughs> I feel like I don't... Hmm, okay. Ringing the Liberty Bell. Is the Bell Lady the one from the opening title screen? Oh! Oh, you're good. I think so. Oh, the garb of a royal prisoner. I kind of... I mean... I'm kind of like, yeah, she's listed as uncredited, so probably not. But that is a very good, you know, that's a very um, interesting point, right? The woman at the top of the movie with her, with her smile had a diadem kind of thing, right? And that other woman did. Interesting. I do have to admit, I'm not quite sure what's happening at this point. Like, I thought Ojo was in serious trouble. Okay. Maybe he still is. Uh... <sighs> Patchwork Girl gets the statue of Danks. I think they're assuming you read the book before you went to see the movie. The statue of Danks. Statue of Danks. Oh, Danks is the okay, okay, okay. They're getting that back. Okay, 
right, right. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Oh, amazing. Amazing. That's cool. Patchwork girl does not recognize her friends in their prison garb. Okay. So they are taken into prison. Okay. And they're, they're made to look like ghosts. <laughs> this is definitely not in the book. Thank you. I'm really glad everybody, well, other people are confused. You have no idea what's happening, but I wouldn't miss Mary's reactions for the world. Okay, good. I was like, am I talking too much? We do want to get through this film sometime in this century. But uh, yes, the patchwork girl is definitely a tomboy. Throw in some tumbling. I mean, I'm here for the tumbling. So far, let's recap. The woozy is amazing. The actor who's clearly playing the woozy and the donkey. And if we don't see them together in the same scene, we know. Um, they could probably do a split screen thing, though. They've done some stop motion and stuff. Okay, Woozy amazing, Donkey amazing. Um, major plot holes, major continuity problems, I would say. Um, but the, yeah, the set's great. The 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 fact that this exists at all is kind of great. And then, I mean, I don't know. I, I they want to get these things to get back and turn the people that they cared about into human form, out of stone, into human form again. I, I don't know how to say it. Maybe the book, the movie is, it's kind of, and the all-female army. Yeah, that was way cool. Everyone loves Danks. Yeah, Danks, Danks, who's like, you know, Dinky Danks over here. This like little soul, this little man, this little man who's turned into stone. And we don't know that he can be turned out of stone. Not... We don't know if he can be restored to human form. So every all these women are like, oh, thanks. This, this little toy. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but the patchwork girl doesn't recognize her friends, okay? Because they're in ghost costumes. This is perfect for Halloween. I did not plan this. This is all lanyap. They think someone has the statue. Oh, they want it. Get out of there. Better get out of <laughs> That's right. Faith, thank you. Thank you. All they need now is the dark well. That's the last piece of this. Who is the... I mean, she's like... She showed up. Dr. Pipped, see, the magician, seeking a dark well. Oh, yeah. He said he'd find it, right? Comes to the house of magic. Physicality is a problem. Oh, okay. The House of Magic is terrifying. I'm sorry. We don't want to spend more time looking at this, but that's that's like a very haunted house. It's very haunted. It's fully haunted in real life and in the movie. I mean, just everything about it is terrifying. Hate it. Hate it. Oh wow, more stop motion. Yeah, this is great. Padma. It's amazing. Wow, wow. Peter Gabriel. Big time. Sledgehammer vibes. Out of it to make. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm meeting each other. Cool. Very cool. Wow. That's an interesting moment of like cooking, right, at the time. You know, this little Bunsen burner kind of thing, you know? I mean, that, you know.
guys, you guys good? <laughs> You're okay. The Lonesome Zoop. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. have to ask and you don't have to answer have you ever done lsd have you ever ever i'm just saying it would be an interesting experience watching this movie having partaken in that i not that i would know a friend told me <sighs> nope With the with the meal has to do with the film you know like there's moments like this where it's like okay it's very cool i guess they want to show what they can do and okay yeah yeah wait a minute altered state. No, I'm kidding. This way to Hopper Town. Only hoppers allowed. We've got a lot of different characters in this film. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah, okay. All the exaggerations are happening because, you know, early filmmakers are like, they're not going to get the story unless we like you know, make everything so huge, so big, right? Now we're in Hopper Town. Now we're in Tweaker Town. I mean Hopper Town. <laughs> Get your hops here. Oh, they're all hopping. Yeah, remember what I said about LSD? Well, forget it, because it's not family friendly, and this is a family friendly show. Hopping people coming out of with clown faces? I just would avoid it. I would avoid it. Personally, <laughs> he's faking being a hopper. It's true. He is. Ugh. How much do you think these people got paid? I'm not kidding. The bachelor girl and her flight. Don't. The cards go away so fast. You know, they're like nobody wants to read. They want to watch people do this like no 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 we, we want to read the patchwork girl in her flight overtakes dr pipped okay <laughs> the town of bozos hey brendan brendan i don't know how long you've been here but spare my master take my leg instead <laughs> if you smoke them if you got them people leg why this is this is weird it really is weird Ugh. it's 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 psychotic <laughs> what? not a lot but more than probably other jobs yeah yeah Oh. Take my leg, but 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 did, they didn't take it. <laughs> Myra, the quilter's like, <gasps> all that piecing. You just cut my quilt. Cotton pots. Okay. Oh no. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. If this gets real weird, hot and tot, tot and hot thing, yeah, we're not doing that. I mean, it's just like super gross. 
just like the cultural grossness of that part is not, I'm not interested. And we know that it does not have any impact on the story whatsoever because we've met, we've had like 10 different characters of like magical creatures. And look, look, there's a lot I like about this movie. I totally respect they were doing what they had with the stuff that they had. And it's, I, you know, I, I have a degree in theater. I did. I used to make theater and I love theater and I love, I love, I love the, the, the woozy. But this movie has serious problems and they ain't all about the script. Yeah, it's of its time. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. His jaw purse or life. Okay, do you know where there is a dark well? We thought you knew where it was, asked Dr. Pip. I mean, yeah. Sure, said the Horners. Now we have Horners. We have a fine dark well in our lower caverns. Awesome. Oh my God. Val found, found out minimum wage in California during 1914 was six, 16 cents an hour. For real? And Mouse says all magical creatures are in the book, just in different order. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And they're probably really great. Plus they cut Dorothy and Scarecrow out of the second half. Interesting. Ah, interesting. Alistrina says that the Tottenhots, right? Uh, was one of two sections removed from the Books of Wonder editions of the book. Yeah, it's just full on like racism, like, full on. Do you know, oh yeah, I already read that card. More clown makeup in case you weren't disturbed already. Walk up the fence, it's easy. When you're on magic powder, it's super easy to scale brick walls. <laughs> Don't knock it till you tried it. Oh, wow. I can't, it's, it's, it's really something. I mean, cool. The incline leading to the dark well. Incomplete sentence, it's fine. Everyone's jumping up and down all the time. You know, the hoppers are, but everybody else is too. Just jumping and jumping. Okay, they've got the dark well, they're getting Jolly, happy. Oh man, that's so weird. <laughs> it's really odd. Exactly, it's a stimulant. Yep. Yep. Roxy, I guess they left Hoppersville. <laughs> Why did they stop hopping? You're hilarious. I know. Let's pause for a cultural uh, corn, uh, touchstone here. <laughs> okay, back then Henry Ford, uh, Val says Henry Ford paid his factory workers $2.34 a day and then increased it in 1914, the year this movie was made, to $5 a day. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's right. They went from Hopper Country to Horner County, hence crossing the wall. Alistrina, I feel like you you are providing a very good tone to this whole viewing watch party because, you know, everybody's having their fun, but it, it's a story that Baum considered one of his greatest works. We know that now. And like, there's, there's continuity, right? And so thank you for being like, here's what is happening. <laughs> like, here are these, these are the characters. They're in the book. And I, I really do appreciate it because I'm being so flipped that it's maybe annoying. I don't know, um, but I appreciate that. Um, and I think other people do too. So we know what's happening. Um, and I also thought, Elizabeth, that the director, I just imagined the director just like, keep jumping, more jumping. And they're like, ah, okay. 10 minutes. The throne room of Ozma of Oz. I bet it's Ozma that was in the beginning.
Sorry. Something that... Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say that the lions on the side were wonderful. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Cowardly Lion. Oh, interesting. Maybe. Did the Cowardly Lion stay in Oz? Other, yeah. There's a tiger in other books. Cool. Is it there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, okay, good. Okay. Okay, these are the these are our friends here. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. I know what happened. Okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, wow, okay. Oh yeah, this is my favorite song. I love this song. Your Highness, these are the prisoners who stole the six-leaf clo six-leaved clover. Leafed. It's fine. What will you do with them, Ozma? Is that the little statue? No, that's the clover. Okay. Okay. Sorry. A lot of people crammed in that room no social distancing thank you oh and you know what summon the royal jury spanish flu pandemic 1918 they didn't know what was coming you know creepy kind of like a movie made in 2018 didn't know what was coming right so we've got the ojo the magician. Oh, is that a tin man? Look at that. Look at that. It is. Look at that tin man. Right? Do you see him? Right? Right there. Right there in the scarecrow. How about that? Do you see them here? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Just look. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, maybe, maybe you all saw it. Okay. Yeah, look, that's the tin man and the cowardly lion and the scarecrow. That's the royal jury. That's the royal jury. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Huh. The royal jury confers. They're like, it's fine. Huh. Cool. All right. Gross. Uh, scarecrow. It's, it's the scarecrow. How about that? Really interesting. Huh. He's, what is he? Like, I won't be part of this jury. I'm biased because I'm also made of scraps. I can't be, I can't be, um, objective. He's like, hey, baby. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, you see? Oh, I knew it. Yep. They're super into each other. Wow. I love how this man is playing a girl in love. It's just great. Actually, I do kind of act like that when I'm in love, so it's fine. Has he gotten his brain? <laughs> he got his brain somewhere. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he... What? Ugh, just... True love. You found the dark well. Oh, I'm found... Somebody found... Well, maybe, maybe the dark web. Hmm? 
a reboot of Patchwork Girl for the 21st century. The Dark Web. We're almost there. Have mercy, gentle ruler, and permit me to restore the statues to life. restore them. Oh, is this Ozma asking the ruler if, of Oz, the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Oz, if she can, if the magician can do the thing. Because we got to get that man back, that boyfriend. In the book, they meet Scarecrow first, then Dorothy, then Ozma. I command you, wizard, to bring the statues here in my presence. In the book, they meet Scarecrow first, then Dorothy, then Ozma, then they go to Quadling Country, where the Tin Man lives, okay? And we're still begging our rulers to be good and just, indeed. Brendan, I'm with you. Okay, Ozma is the ruler, the wizard is gone, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Carol Hempel saw Frank Zappa in the crowd got eyes for that. It's true, he was there. I saw him too, by the way. I did. I saw who you were talking about. Oh, it's kind of... Okay. Here are two of the statues. The third is missing. We know where it is. Nope, here it is. Oh, the maid got it back. She stole it back. Here is the third statue, said Dr. Pip. He got it back very quickly. Soldier, arrest that girl! That maid, that thieving maid. These two, who knows where they've been? Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, they're so silly in their love. They don't have any bones! <laughs> The music tells us that everything's gonna be okay. That's that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carol's got dibs on Danks. Ridiculous. The donkey. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I feel like Patchwork Girl. Alistrina, is Patchwork Girl in the book more? I mean, with all these supporting characters who are fantastical and interesting, you know, most of them. Hey, it worked. Danks' little look. He's just a little guy. He's just a little guy. Nothing was changing, buddy. Oh no, there it is. Hey. All right. They're in love. That's cool. There's reunited. Ojo and Unk Nunkin are together again. And that's Ozma. Okay. Yeah. We did it. The book has a the book has a considerably different cast of characters. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, okay. Uh, it's of its time, obviously. And, and I think we, I mean, I had fun watching that. It was, it was pretty weird. But the donkey was awesome. The Woozy was awesome. Yeah, the video seller, totally. No Danks. There was no Danks at all, Alistrina, in the movie. I mean, in the book. That's interesting. Wow, they really... I don't know, man. A film, you know, the film historians out there. What an interesting thing. And isn't it interesting how comedy changes? I mean, comedy. Comedy from, like, generation to generation. It's Comedy is so fascinating. It changes so much, you know? 
what's just like hilarious to somebody in 1914 we're like uh <laughs> womp 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 i mean the donkey's funny but it's also like ooh. like there's just a lot in this movie that's cringy or racist and now it's like i don't know everybody's so like uh, you know, like everything's like ironic. Like this movie's like ironically funny, but you know, at the time it was probably, it was probably really funny. I mean, the donkey's funny, <laughs> but then, I mean, even jokes, you know, in, in 80s sitcoms, you know, have changed. That was funny back then, I guess. And now it's like, of course, some comedy is timeless and whatever, but I just think studying film would be really interesting. Um, I just want to look up, what was I going to look up? One last thing, and then we're gonna we're gonna sign off. We have to go eventually. Um, Patchwork Girl. Um, oh yeah, I was just gonna look up Woozy Patchwork Girl. I just want to see if there's a cool picture of our friend from the movie, because I really oh Patchwork Girl film, because I really like him. Yeah, here he is, and here is. Ozma! Ah, ah. Oh no, that didn't work. Never mind. <laughs> what I was gonna do was this. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> she's actually she's actually super pretty, right? Like she's got this great smile. She's got a great smile. Um but she's creepy. And here's here's a little woos. The woos. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's Patchwork Girl too. Some of these stills. I just want to look at a few. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Yep. 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 Hmm. Interesting. Cave of the Woozy. I like them. I'm into it. I think Woozy was cool. All right, everybody. You, uh, you stuck, you stuck in there? I mean, I think, I mean, a lot of you did because we were talking th throughout the whole film. Um, and Alistrina has the Gutenberg, the link for the actual story in there. I mean, it, it's probably a pretty quick, oh, that's a great idea. Ah. Um, Marianne, great idea. Um, it's probably worth a read. I mean, especially because it sounds like the Patchwork Girl is part of the story a lot more than the film and and yeah i mean it's great so so now you know about that <laughs> you know about the the wizard of oz book the seventh book in the series the book that frank baum was most proud of he produced this film he produced this film and yeah quilts come quilts go everywhere even to even into silent films um there's a, that's a picture of the woozy. Oh, that's good. Um, it looks pretty much the same as the movie. Um, yeah, neat picture. Okay, you all, thank you so much. Pampries, I'm so glad you came by. I'm so glad everybody who's new in um, at the show, I'm really glad you came. The show is different every single time. Um, we watch movie. This is the first movie we've ever watched. Well, we watched a short documentary um, a while ago, but uh, but the next stream is on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central, uh, 4 5 p.m. in the UK. And uh, I've got a lot of, of really wonderful things to show you. And by the way, look what came. Fabric of a Nation, the book. I ordered the book. This is the book for the, uh, the wonderful exhibit for the Boston Museum of Fine Arts at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. I kind of, I don't know, of course I'm going to open it. I was going to maybe not open it um, because here's the news. It was one for the books, right, Holmes? Um, I'm going. I'm going to go see the exhibit. Um, and here's the deal. Because I was like, maybe if I go, we can meet up. The deal is this. I want to. I'm going for one night only with my mom. And she suggested it and I suggested it kind of at the same time, like we missed each other in email. Cause I was like, do you want to see this? And she was like, yeah, I want to see it. And she was like, do you want to see it? And so I go home for Christmas to Chicago on like the 18th. And then mom and I are figuring out when to go to like go to Boston for like a day, you know, to stay one night in Boston to see it. It's amazing that it could even happen. So here's the deal. So here's the deal. 
I need, and I mean, don't tell my mom I said this, but like what I want to do is I want to ask my mom if it's cool, if like, you know, anybody who wants to be there can like meet us there and we can like see the show. Cause I'm going to like I'll have lunch with mom. We'll see the show. We'll go out to dinner. You know, we're going to we'll be together at the holiday. So like, is it cool if like we just sort of anybody who wanted to, you know, meet there, you know, if you're around or whatever, we can, you know, just because I because it could because the reason I ask and I hesitate is because it could be like a mom might be like, well, I thought it was a mother daughter thing. You know, she that and that would be fair. But I don't think so, because my mom, I think she'd be kind of tickled if people were like, oh, well, this is great. Let's go see the show with Marianne and Marion. I mean, if she's down with it, I would love it. So that's the deal. So I'll let you know exactly when we're going to go. And if anybody's in the area and wants to go and mom doesn't feel put upon, then you should come. So, um, so I'll let you know. Okay. Um, you are all terrific. Yeah, I'll take time with my mom for sure. For sure. Um, but who knows? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Ask mom first. Okay. Okay. You guys are great. I'll see you soon. I'll see you Tuesday and, and Thursday regular, no stream on Saturday next week and probably Sunday. So, because I'm going to Budapest, but just check the schedule and make sure you have notifications on. And if you haven't subscribed yet, give it a subscribe. Um, cause that's really great. Helps, helps make this all happen. Okay, have a great uh, rest of your day on Sunday. Enjoy. I enjoy you all so much. Thank you so much.